Today, I'm going to cover Founding Fathers. This is a board game by Jolly Roger Games. It's not a war game. It's going to be in my historical non-war game section. You can find that in my playlist down below. But uh, I woke up today, it was snowing, and I thought, well, time for some war game content early into the new year. But based on today, uh, at least here in the States, um, I thought this would be an appropriate game to talk a little bit about and to look a little bit about. Um, now, for people outside of the United States, today probably doesn't have much of a special meaning, but based on what, uh, what this is the anniversary of, I thought this was an appropriate topic. Now, this is from uh, the same designers of 1960, The Making of a President, which is a political game talking about the election of 1960 between uh, Nixon and Kennedy. This one is, is political uh, in some respects as well. In this game, you are drafting the United States Constitution. This is going back to the, uh, the Constitutional Convention uh, in Philadelphia, and this is the Philadelphia Convention Hall where they uh, negotiated and drafted the Constitution and the game board there, if you look at it, is kind of a replica of the, um, of the place where they actually negotiated the Constitution. Uh, you got a rule book here, and I'm not going to go over this in great detail on the rules, so if you're looking at this to figure out how to play the game, then you're probably looking at the wrong place. But if you just want to get a feel for what this game is about or what, what's in this game, then maybe this is an okay place to start. But you have the rule book here, which really most of the rule book, if not more than half the rule book, is historical in nature. It talks about the different delegates um, and some of their leanings and you know what they came from, uh, where, where, they, where they're coming from and what their, you know, kind of what their um philosophies were as it might be in the uh, in the convention uh, so there's there's quite a bit of history in here and there's also quite a bit of history on the cards this is kind of a uh, again this is a kind of euro game uh, it's going to be card placement and you're trying to get victory points hey imagine that getting victory points at the end of the game but what you're doing here is um, you're drafting the constitution so you're going to have the different articles of the constitution the united states constitution and they're going to be um, the article as it was eventually passed, so what we're used to seeing in the Constitution. And then you're going to have a contrary point of view or, or kind of the, the opposite of what, uh, what that provision was. And so what was actually being debated in, uh, in, at the convention, at the Constitutional Convention at the time. There's also these symbols on here. What these symbols basically mean is like if the big star is for big states – um, the, uh, you have the anti-federalist, which is, you know, the snake there, you have the federalist, and then you have, you know, the, the, uh, circle of smaller stars is the small states. So, um, so what you, what you got going on here is those are the four main factions that are, uh, that are kind of debating the different articles of the constitution and of course, the big states are opposed to the small states, or at least that philosophy. So, the uh, the big state factions, you know, which are here, you know, they're going to be going for articles that are, you know, giving some um, favor to or giving some, you know, privilege to the the larger states. And again, the small states or small states' rights, you know, they're looking for articles that are trying to balance out the power and give them. Uh, give them uh, some uh, protections under the Constitution as it might be. Then you also have the uh, Anti-Federalist and the Federalist, and those two are opposed as well. Why is that important? Well, that's going to determine who can vote on certain articles. So what's going to happen is you're going to have an article come out, so like we have here, uh, and I, I don't believe they come out in order that you can shuffle these up and then they come out. So you might have like this article come out. And again, the, the anti-federalist want are, are for this, uh, the way that it's written. And that's the way it was eventually passed. And then you have 
the uh, contrary or the opposite kind of view that the Federalists wanted, which wasn't, uh, which wasn't passed. And so that will come out and be up for vote. And then the other, then the, you'll pull out another article um, that, uh, again, this is the way the big states uh, wanted to have it. And then you have the small states. This is the way they wanted to have it. That will go into committee. And so uh, that's how you set up the board. And then you'll have a round and the round will continue uh, you'll t continue taking turns until this article here that's actually up for vote is finally voted on. So how do you vote for these things? Well, you have these cards here that are all the different delegates. And, uh, well, let's start off with who you have. You're going to play one of, the, one of the delegates. So you can play as James Madison. And, again, there's some history here. It tells you how many delegates there are and where they're from. And it also shows you what might maybe their leanings are, you know, whether they're you know, small states, big states, Federalists, Anti-Federalists, what their leanings are in, in within each of those uh, delegations. And then the, the quill here is those are one of the founding fathers that you're going to play with. So you can play, uh, play as uh, James Madison, William Patterson, Charles Pinckney, Roger Sherman. And if you're playing with five players, you can be uh, Alexander Hamilton. So any references to the musical, you can have at that. And you'll get some of these tokens. I think you start out with three. I mean, like this is the one for Madison. This is the one for, I believe this is for Patterson. Uh, but you'll have, you know, there's five different groups of these tokens that are going to be going on, you know, either the, the scoring track here, this is your victory point track, or you might put these on the debate track. And I'll talk about that in a second here. So you're, you're also going to get a hand of these cards. You'll start off with the card. If you're playing Madison, you'll get him. If you're playing uh, Pickney, you'll get him. You'll get these cards, but you're also going to draft and get some of these other cards as well. Um, like if you're not playing with Alexander Hamilton, he'll be available in the draft. There's good old George Washington, and there's Benjamin Franklin. So you, you'll you get a hand of these cards, and then when it, you, you're, you can do one of like um, three different things on your turn. You can vote, and when you vote... You know, you're going to put it down if you want to vote for the the proposition or the, or the article that's up for vote. You put that out there and you're going to put your token out there. You can also put more than one if you've got like more than one person from the same delegation. So like if you have uh, several people from Virginia, you can put, you know, a couple people down there from Virginia and that's going to get you uh, uh, more votes because it's going to be harder to displace that. If someone wanted to vote no against that for Virginia, they'd have to put three down if you put two down there. Or they have to put two down if you put one down there. Simple simple math there. Um, at the end of the vote, if, if this proposition passed and you were on the winning side of it, you're going to get a point for every delegate you have on there. Then you'd move up on the victory point track. So that's how you get points during the game. Uh, a vote is ended when either all the uh, – there's six negative seats and there are um, uh, seven uh, yes seats or tables. Once one side, either six or seven, is full, then the, the, the article either passes or doesn't pass, okay? And um, – and then that goes off to the side, and you know that becomes important later because, based on what passes, you know you're, you're going to be collecting these tokens on the debate, which I'll talk about that in a second. But once you collect a certain amount of these tokens, if if the number of articles that pass that have the same token, let's say, let's say four of these end up at, in the Constitution at the end of the game, um, four of these, and you get uh, four points for every token you have. So that's and those points are added on to any points that you collected during the game. That's basically the, the main way of how point scoring goes in this game. So uh, you're going to be voting. That's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is you can, um, you can uh, discard a card for one of the tracks. So let's say I've had this card for the big city. I can discard this card and move up on this track. So I take my guy here, move him up there on the track. And I'll you know keep and I can discard more cards and try to get up on this track. If there's a tie at the end of the round, and again the round ends when uh, the, the vote is taken because either the side of the yes or no seats are, are filled up. If there's a tie, then nobody gets the token. But if there, if there's someone's ahead on that track, they're going to get a token. And again, they want to have those tokens because 
they're going to get votes based on however many of those articles of the Constitution that match that token at the end of the game. The other thing you can do with the card is you can play it for its um, its event. So you know, it harkens back to oh uh, Twilight Struggle and some of those games. You know you get um, you're going to get whatever the uh, event is on the card or whatever the text is. Like here, gain one additional influence marker. So you'll gain another one. You start off with three and you'll get another one of those because you want to have more of those out to to do certain things, to vote and, and what have you on uh, propositions. So that that is, uh, so you can use the card for votes or multiple cards for votes. You can discard cards to go up on the debate track to get those tokens, which help you in in-game scoring. Or you can... Um, Play the card for the event. Um, once a vote is taken, then uh, anybody that was on the losing side of the vote, they're going to go to committee. And, you know, being in committee is not necessarily a, a bad place to be because if you if you actually end up having a majority in here, uh, so let's say Blue had some more tokens or had the majority in there, then this, they can pass this resolution either way. They can just decide uh, whether they want to do it as the uh, well, that way it was passed, or if they want to use the, the opposite side of it. And so then they'll pass that. Uh, then once then once this, you know, of course, this vote is taken, this goes off the board and kept for later scoring, and then a new a resolution will come out. And if something's out of committee, then a new one will come out there. And you're just going to keep going around and doing that until um, until you draft the Constitution and go through all the different articles that might be in there. So uh, that's the game. Uh, it's got some definitely some historical uh, flavor to it. Uh, you know, you have the actual provisions of the Constitution. You actually have some actual alternatives that came up in debate during the Constitution. You're playing off the different some of the main factions that were, and forces that were at odds during the Constitution, small states versus big states, and, and who's going to have more power, you know, Federalists versus Anti-Federalists, and, you know, do we want to have a strong uh, federal government, or do we want to have more states' rights? So, you know, those, those are portrayed relatively well in the different provisions of the Constitution, as well in the different delegates and you know from the different states and where they where their leanings were you know and what you have in cards here um you know oh the other thing i guess you can do on your turn is you can i guess it's called snub delegates where you can like discard and, and get other cards because you know you might not like the cards you have you might not have anything that you can really vote on because you can't you know an anti-federalist can't vote uh, 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 Federalists can't vote yes on this. They have to vote no on this. So you might be in a situation based on what cards you have in your hand. You're not being able to do what you want. You can discard them and get move up on this on the debate track. But like if you really wanted to vote against this one and you all you had was Federalist cards, you're not going to be able to vote for that. You have you you, you you can't vote against that. You're going to have to vote for that with the cards you have. So you might want to discard some cards to get some new cards uh, to you know, try to play out your strategy. Uh, again, this isn't an exhaustive uh, review of the rules, but this is general understanding of how the, the game plays. Um, I, I like the historical theme here. There's very few games, I don't know of any other games, that you actually draft the Constitution of the United States or, or, or the legal documents of any country, for that matter. Uh, so very unique in that aspect. Um, the 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 way the gameplay works is is pretty good. I mean, you've got these these cards that have multiple uses. That plays pretty well. You've got a real strong theming in that the cards give you some text, and they're they're tied to where that person's leanings were, whether they were you know small states' rights, large states' rights, Federalist, Anti-Federalist, and the like. So that gives you some feel uh, and. Um, you know, some, some theming and, and is consistent with the historical period. Um, the way that the voting works and the way the debate works, I think that gives you some feel and flavor of the period and how that came about. If you look in the book here, there is, again, there's a lot of history in here. Um, there's actually in here, I can find it here, just paging through this stuff. And the rule book is laid out pretty well. Uh, as well, but there's an there's a kind of a drawing of the um, 
Independence Hall, uh, where the, the, the convention was at, and, and then there's they're showing some of the tables and stuff. So if you look on the board, I mean, you know, they use the green covers there. I mean, it, it's, it, it gives you some of the feel and flavor, you know, of what it would be like to be voting in here and trying to, you know, negotiate with the different uh, delegates and trying to see who's going for certain things. Um, you know, as you're playing this, I mean, this is recommended for three to, to five. You really need at least three people. So there's going to be some interplay between the players on, you know, on certain provisions of, well, you know, if, if you vote for that, you know, maybe I'll help out on the next one. Like if you're a big, you know, federalist person, but I'm a big states rights person, um, you know, maybe we'll work something out, you know, for the next, the, the next uh, article that comes up for a vote and stuff like that. So there's 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 gameplay and strategy, but there's also some interplay uh, on the strategy as well. So you know that's how I decided to uh, to start off my uh, January sixth with talking about the going back to the beginning at least for the United States uh, and talking about the founding fathers. And a game that talks about the drafting of the Constitution, which, you know, as you see in looking at these different provisions, um, and one thing I think that's important to know about the Constitution, I mean, it's not a perfect document. Some people think it's, in, you know, it's infallible. It's the, it's the Bible. It's, it's not. It is a, a working process. It is... Uh, and it actually recognizes that in the document itself. It has the ability to amend itself. It, and in fact, the Bill of Rights, the, the, the people that, that people talk about a lot, you know, the, the, um, um, you know, the first amendments, you know, that are so important to many people. Well, those weren't in the original Constitution. They were amendments. So uh, the, the, the document itself recognized that it was going to be an evolving document. It was going to and had the need to make changes and to address things that come up later. And uh, you know, some of the most important rights that we all cherish and and talk about. Well, those weren't in the original document. They came from the fact that the document wasn't perfect, but yet knew that it needed to have some mechanisms to evolve over time. So I think that's a kind of an interesting thing that you kind of see as you're going through some of these debates and arguments and trying to figure out which side, you know, should should win. I mean, again, you're going back for the victory points, right, uh, on this thing. But it is interesting to see some of the alternatives to some of these provisions and how they played out uh, over time and what actually got in the Constitution and some of the debate that was uh, in, uh, behind the passing of some of those. Uh, again, you know, I wouldn't... Uh, uh, Substitute actually reading up, reading the Constitution itself. I think you should all, at least in the United States, you probably should take some time and read that. It's not that long of a document. But also you know, reading up on the history of it. I think this is a very fascinating time uh, and something that's very important to, to should be something very important to, to all, uh, all Americans. Um, but, uh, but if you want to try to learn it from a game standpoint, this is probably the best thing I've seen out there that kind of gives you some flavor of how this process took place and what was some of the important aspects of it. So I hope you found this was interesting. Um, and if you're you know, not interesting in the U.S. Constitution or the United States for that matter, you know, sorry for taking up some of your time here, but, uh, but it is a good game. So even if you're not interested in, it, in the theme, uh, the gameplay is, is pretty interesting, albeit not a war game. Enjoy. <laughs>